Over the last couple of years, there have been a ton of new officers added into Warpath. Back when I first started playing Warpath almost three years ago in Server 13, back when it first released on iOS, there was not that many officers. And we actually went a long period of time where there was no new officers added and people were starting to kind of look around and be like, hey, what, what are we going to be doing? Are there going to be new officers? Are there not going to be new officers? And that question got answered very quickly and there is a ton of new officers. So what we're going to do in this video is we are going to rank the top Generation 1 officers. Welcome back guys. So first things first, a little side note. This is my first video actually recording on my new mic. Brand new mic just came in, just got it all set up. I'm super excited about it. Let me know what you guys think about the audio. Does it sound better than it did in the past with my old mic? Does it sound worse? Can you guys hear me okay? Is it too loud? Is it too quiet? Any feedback you guys can give me, let me know in the comments and I will make sure that I read them all. If there is any issues, uh, like I said, just let me know and I will work to get those fixed. And if you guys are enjoying the videos on the channel, finding value out of the videos, consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel. Both of those things help the channel out tremendously. All right, so let's talk about officers, first generation officers specifically. There are 23 first generation officers in total. That includes both ground force and air force and warpath. Out of those 23, a lot of them are really kind of a waste of time, especially later game. But there are eight in particular that are at least worthy of a conversation. So we are going to talk about the top eight Generation 1 ground force officers. And this is also going to be in no particular order. This is not necessarily a tier list. While we are ranking them or picking the top eight out of all 23, this is not in any particular order. And a couple things that you guys might not know some of you might a lot of you might but some of you might not so i'm going to point it out just in case there's been a, like i said so many officers that have been added into warpath that you might be wondering well how do we know which one is first generation second generation third generation especially if you are newer in the game and you don't kind of instinctively know which ones are newer and which ones are not easy way you're going to see this officer kind of icon up here in the top right hand corner Click on that and it'll tell you what generation each specific officer is from. So Vox is a generation three officer and this is you can do that with any of these officers and it'll tell you which generation. So let's start with number one again in no particular order but a absolute no brainer here Antonina Shevchenko. She is a monster. She is not only one of the best generation one officers in the game. She is absolutely the best Generation 1 officers in the game, and she is also one of the best overall officers out of all generations in the game. She has withstood the test of time. She's an absolute must-have. She is a early game priority focus. I mean, Antonina is just a beast, plain and simple. I mean, just looking over her skills, right, like, it's, it's kind of shocking, actually, at how good she really is especially for being a generation one and like right out of the gate early game officer that you guys are going to be able to acquire like it's it's actually kind of crazy how good she really is i mean 25 percent additional damage when garrisoned uh 30 additional firepower for the artillery and this is a huge one increases the skill damage of all of the officers by 25 percent and when she's fully awakened she gives the extra map grid of firing range like that's just insane guys especially considering the fact that the only other officer at least currently in the game that offers an extra grid of firing range is lady liberty which is an exclusive lounge officer so that just adds even more value to antonina next up again another no-brainer here is war machine war machine is another right out of the gate open officer i mean you guys are going to get him like soon as your base deploys for the first time that's how quick you get war machine He's also able to be ranked up or his skills rather are able to be ranked up with getting his statues out of the Alliance store. So you don't even have to use any of your universal golden officer statues. You can just get his statues out of the Alliance store and focus using those universal statues somewhere else. But he is, in my opinion, if not the most underrated officer in the game, easily one of the most underrated officers in the game especially for how early you get him. I mean, he does, again, just like Antonina, some really good stuff i mean he offers a ton of value i mean 1300 damage coefficient that's pretty middle of the road for most officers now most generation two and three especially officers are going to do a pretty standard damage coefficient of about 1500 a lot of the generation one officers 
are going to do about 1,050 damage coefficient. So the, the 1,300 is, is really good, especially for a Generation 1 officer. And a lot of these officers kind of carry this versatile tag, and some of them are, but in my opinion, and maybe you guys disagree with me, I don't think you probably will, though. In my opinion, War Machine is absolutely the most single versatile officer in the entire game, even late game. He's great on tanks, he's great on artillery, he's great on infantry. Like, there is nothing that War Machine can't do. And he is just so undervalued and underappreciated by so many of the players, including myself, for honestly a long period of time. This was a long time ago. But, I mean, War Machine is a beast. And, I mean, one of the most sought-after skills he offers through the officer skill system, if you don't have him deployed on an actual unit, is his load time reduction. It's a special skill, but he's going to reduce the load time by 10%. I mean, it's freaking off the charts, guys. Next up is going to be Percy. Now, I actually struggled if I wanted to put Percy on this list or not. And the reason I struggled with that is because she is pretty much a non-factor late game. But I went ahead and put her on the list. And the reason I put her on the list is because she does actually offer a lot of true value in the early game. Not only does she offer a lot of true value early in the game, but you can actually awaken her super quickly and for completely free. So you're going to get a fully awakened officer that's got some pretty good skills, all things considering, again, especially early game, for completely free. And they're going to give you a way to uh, fully, awaken all, uh, fully awaken her and level all her skills up very easy and very fast. So for me, that's where she slides into that list and makes the, the cut for the top Generation 1 officers. Now, again, once you start getting Generation 2 and 3 officers rolling out and unlocking, especially for you newer players, uh, eventually Percy's going to find her way out of your lineup. There's just really not a place for her uh, later game. But she still does have some skills that you can rob for, you know, the officer skill system. In my opinion, the top the top skill that you could probably benefit from is going to be her second skill. It's an offense skill. It increases the damage of that officer's troop by 25% when garrisoned. So that's a valuable skill that can carry on, uh, you know, later game with the officer skill system. But just the the value she adds early in the game is what got her on this list. Next up is going to be Saber of the Nation. Now, Saber of the Nation, if you're a newer player, you won't know this, but Saber of the Nation is an exclusive lounge officer, which means he is not accessible through the free-to-play system. You cannot level his skills up with Golden Officer statues. You have to have the exclusive lounge to actually get his statues and to, awake, and to level his skills up and to awaken him. Nonetheless, though, he is still a Generation 1 officer, and he is a beast. He is a little less valuable than Antonina. The reason I say that is because he doesn't offer that extra firing grid. So having Saber of the Nation, just a theoretical example here, is great. But if you have Saber of the Nation, but you don't have Antonina or... Uh, Lady Liberty, and the enemy does have one of those two officers, then it doesn't matter how good Saber of the Nation is if he can't even attack them because they're out of range. So Saber of the Nation is slightly less valuable than Antonina, but to be honest, we're kind of comparing apples to oranges because one's free to play, one's not. But just in terms of strictly artillery officer value, I'm still going to put Antonina slightly ahead, but Saber of the Nation is an absolute beast. He's got some phenomenal skills for the officer skill system as well. Uh, you know, I, I personally like this damage increases the damage to tanks and helicopters. That's one of my personal favorites for the officer skill system. Obviously, once I get him fully awakened, he's going to be full time deployed on a unit. But until then, that is the skill that I rob. And then his fully awakened skill is obviously incredible. He is going to have a 30 percent chance to instantly activate his tactical skill. So when you're talking about Antonina and a saber combination or Lady Liberty and a saber combination. I mean, that's going to be that's going to be a tough combo to beat. I don't care who you are. So he really does offer a lot of value, even though it's exclusive lounge, he's getting put on the list. The next officer on the list, which actually shocked me, is Warrior Wiz. Warrior Wiz has not been in the game, but maybe a few months at, at the very most. Most of you that have been around for at least, you know, three, four, five months here are going to remember the uh, Metal Slug collaboration that Warpath did. And that's where Warrior Wiz came into the game. So he's he's not he's not an old officer. In fact, he's fairly new, but he got tagged. And I'll show you guys just to prove that he is tagged as a, as a Generation 1 officer. And I guess the only reason they did that is because they make him accessible right out of the gate as well in the early game. Now, Warrior Wiz is an interesting one. He's also pretty valuable. Now, I'm not going to say he is a just a premium tank officer. He's a versatile officer, but he is absolutely a tank officer, 
point blank. He does incredibly high damage coefficient, especially when we're talking about Generation 1 officers. He does 1,500 damage coefficient. He's got a couple of special skills, one of them being a critical strike, one of them being a opportunity to reset the target's load time, which, if it does hit, is, is obviously going to be a huge asset and a huge help. In my opinion, if I'm an early game player, if I'm a new player and you're watching this and you have an opportunity to go for Warrior Wiz, I would suggest it because he is going to be an officer that will add value and will be sustainable for a very, very long period of time to you. He was not in the game, early game, when I was early game stages, but he is now, and in my opinion, he's worth it. He is the best overall tank officer in this Generation 1 list. You could argue War Machine. Again, War Machine is able to be ranked up, or his skills are able to be ranked up by getting his statues in the Alliance Store. Warrior Wiz, you have to use your, your Universal Officer statues, which makes him, outside of Antonina, probably the next Generation 1 officer priority for your universal statues. Next up on the list is going to be Bomb Princess. Again, just like Warrior Wiz, they came out really close in time together. She's a Generation 1 officer. I'll prove it again. Tagged as a Generation 1 officer. She's not that old. She's been in the game for just a handful of months now. She is also another very, very good officer. She offers some really interesting skills, actually. One being this special skill, which has a chance to dodge an incoming attack. Her passive, or not her passive skill, her protection skill, actually, when paired with Warrior Wiz, it says paired with uh, the Officer Peregrine Falcon skill, which Peregrine Falcon is one of Warrior Wiz's skills. So when they're paired together, she's going to increase uh, the chance of a critical strike by 4%. So that'll stack with Warrior Wiz's critical strike special skill. So they do work very well together. If you're wanting just kind of a one-two punch combination, especially early game on a tank, Bomb Princess is probably in that conversation. Now, out of Warrior Wiz or Bomb Princess, which one is priority? In my opinion, it's going to be Warrior Wiz. Warrior Wiz first, and then Bomb Princess. That's how I would do it. Now, jumping over to Air Force officers, there are a pretty good amount of Generation 1 Air Force officers, and there's really only two that are actually worth really anything, especially later game. A no-brainer is going to be Golden Pixie. Now, Golden Pixie is a bomber-specific officer, so obviously she adds zero value to you if you are not interested in your Air Force at all, or if you are, if you want to be one of those players that runs, you know, a two- or three-fighter combination. If you are a newer player, you're not going to know the struggle of leveling, leveling up your Air Force, especially when you start to unlock and transition into modern units. You guys will feel the pain pretty quick, trust me. Uh, it takes forever to level up Air Force units. But if you guys do have any interest in running a bomber of any kind from any camp, Golden Pixie is an absolute no-brainer, especially early game. I've called her for years the Antonina of the Sky. I, I think that's kind of stuck. I know a lot of other people refer to her that to her as that as well. And it's simple. When you fully awaken her, her awakened skill is going to give your bomber one additional extra bombing run. That's that's why I call her the Antonina of the Sky. Antonina gives one extra grid of firing range. Golden Pixie is going to give you one extra bombing run. And that extra bombing run really a lot of times is kind of the difference between totally killing off a unit or not. And, and to me, I found a lot of value even later game having that extra bombing run when I'm running my Martyr Bomber, for example. So Golden Pixie really does add a lot of value both early game and later game. Now, the last Generation 1 officer on the list is going to be a fighter officer, Silver Comet. Now, Silver Comet was actually not in the game when I first started the game. He was added later on. He has been in the game for a pretty considerable amount of time now, so it's not like he is a new officer by any means. But when I started playing, he was not in the game. But he is tagged as a Generation 1 officer, and out of all of the Generation 1 fighter-specific officers in the game, Silver Comet is hands down the best. Obviously, I have not invested much into him. He is not awakened, again, because he was not available in the game when I first started playing, and by the time he did become available, there were some other officers I was interested in already. But that's not to take any credit away from Silver Comet. If you're going to run a fighter plane, Early game, Silver Comet is an easy, hands-down, no-brain choice. And he's also a good officer that's going to continue to add value and, and be a good kind of backbone officer for your fighter, even later game, to be honest. Like, he's a very, very good officer. So going after him early is not going to set you back later game. He is really a good officer, both 
early and late game. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree with my list? Do you guys disagree with my list? Did I leave anybody off of the list that you would have possibly put on? I mean, there's a couple that I could possibly think of, maybe a Winter Huntsman. There was a reason I left him off, but maybe you could make a case that he should be on that list. Or maybe there's some other officers that I'm not factoring in that maybe you guys think should have been on the list. Let me know if you guys have any disagreements with me. Let me know what they are and let me know why. And then, like I said, if you guys have any kind of critiques or feedback on the mic as well, uh, that would be greatly appreciated too. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Both of those things help out tremendously. And for those of you that have stuck around the entire video, if you guys do have access to Discord and are not already in our community Discord server, the link to that is going to be in the description of the video. Click on that link. It'll take you right into the community Discord server. Whether you're a new player and have questions, want to learn, whether you're a veteran player and just want to come hang out with the community, doesn't matter. Absolutely everybody is welcome. Thanks for hanging out with me on the video today, guys, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.